All right, so really giving you a very quick personal view on evaluating complex interventions. It's a new area. It's an area that I think there's a very large appetite for, in fact, seen by the large numbers itself. Uh, it's hard to be exhaustive in 12 minutes. Uh, I'm not going to give you a list of methods, etc. Uh, I'm really framing the discussion that's to follow. But I want to leave you with a sense that uh, this is an exciting field, and it's an area where, for those of you who are going to do your PhDs or postdocs, uh, an area of massive interest. Uh, along the lines, I want to uh, also plug the new center that we've started at the Lee Kashing Knowledge Institute called the Evaluation Center for Complex Health Interventions. We actually work closely with other centers at the Lee Kashing, but complexity is our sort of interest. Uh, very quickly, the, the talk will start with a very brief example, two minutes on that. Uh, We'll sort of move towards some, give you a sense of different approaches to evaluating complexity. I'll try to do that in about four to five. Uh, I, and then I'm gonna, going to yank back and say, just remind you that evaluation has multiple purposes. And it's not just about, does this intervention work? This is important for complex, for complex interventions for many different reasons that we may or may not get into. Uh, uh, one quick slide on ideas for steps forward. I think I'm going to end there, but if I have time, some, uh, the idea of actually, so what? How is evaluation useful, et cetera? Maybe this is for another day. So very quick example of really what got me in the field. I actually had a very traditional training in evaluation uh, where I really was into experimental and quasi-experimental studies. Uh, uh, about five, six years ago, I was working in Scotland on this project where if you look at the right-hand side, and I'm really giving you the one-minute version of the story, the focus was on reducing health inequalities in Scotland. What the Scottish government said was let's focus on 15% of the poorest areas in Scotland Let's plan interventions around that. So let's have a heart paisley. So the focus was on, on heart disease. Uh, so their hope was by, by planning an intervention in 15% of the poorest areas, this intervention was implemented in Paisley, one of the poorer parts of, of Scotland. Their hope was by, by implementing an intervention in a poor area, they would actually get poor people. That's an assumption. So if you just work through the chain, the logical chain out here, there was an, a process of identifying and reaching the poorest people. There was a risk screening. There was a health coaching. A whole lot of other interventions. Just to cut to the chase, the hope was this would lead towards improved outcomes, which, if you did get the poorest people, uh, could result in a reduction in health inequalities. Now, what I was trained to do as an evaluator was just do the evaluation, write your report, come back to us in three to five years and tell us, was there a reduction in health inequalities? Within three months of the intervention starting, the project managers and people monitoring the system said, actually, it's not the poorest people coming through the system. So the project manager sort of raised the issue, should we be doing things differently? Why? Because chances are we're not going to be impacting health inequalities if it's the better off from the system that's coming. So for me, this was a sort of a wake-up call to sort of say, actually, this view that let's do our science for the next three years, next five years, don't interfere with the science, uh, this idea of an integrated evaluation and knowledge translation became quite real. So again, I could really, I'm really keeping it on the time. But again, if you sort of look at have a heart pace, you look at its multiple components. You have, you have reach, a whole range of reach activities, which I can sort of I can spend an hour talking about that. There's screening, there's health coaching, there's a whole lot of other interventions that follow. Uh, these are multiple components, and they may or may not interact with each other. As it turned out, for Have a Heart Paisley, one of the mistakes they made organizationally was not having interactions between the different components. So once the REACH team did their thing, they said, okay, we're done. We're off to holiday for Spain. You guys, the screening folks, handle it. That's not a way to handle, to implement complex interventions. Dynamic. Most of our evaluation methodologies focus on static interventions. Most of them. Where your treatment group, your control group, the treatment is well prescribed. But often programs change over time. In fact, one view of learning is you change based on constraints, et cetera. So again, what are the implications for methodology? Third, the interventions might be heterogeneous. Jonathan might get a different intervention from Robin. That's the nature of complexity. So actually, we need to personalize it. So the whole focus on personalized medicine, person-centered care, that ranges a whole, that opens up a whole range of possibilities. So this, by the way, is not a definition that necessarily the, the most latest version of, of evaluating complex interventions in the evaluation field. There's a field called evaluation. There's an American Evaluation Association that meets every year. Uh, 
complexity is a hot area there. A lot of it is much more into more nonlinear processes. I'll keep today's story quite simple. So what I want to give you a sense of is there are different approaches to evaluating complex interventions. The Medical Research Council's approach. Uh, they're def this is in the UK. In 2000, they came out with a definition. I won't read it. The greater the difficulty in, in defining precisely what exactly the active ingredients, et cetera, et cetera. Not a very precise definition. In 2008, they updated it. And they talked about numbers of interacting components, different levels, uh, degree, on, degree of flexibility or tailoring the intervention. If I'm going fast, it's because I'm keeping an eye on the time right here. It's seven minutes and 23 seconds. <laughs> uh, so, so, so I like that. Uh, uh, so part of this updating of the Medical Research Councils between 2000 and 2008, they began asking deeper questions about the notion of theory. Are we really sure we understand the theories of these interventions? Uh, there was a little greater recognition of actually we should be led by the realities of practice. Uh, again, the this whole problem of complex interventions is if something gets implemented in Moncton, how do you implement the same thing in, in Montreal, et cetera? What does that mean and what does responding to local context mean? Lots of questions are raised, not proper, not decent enough answers, I think. Uh, this is the second, second branch of work in the, from the system dynamics area, where this comes out of MIT and a range of other scientists around that. 2006, American Journal of Public Health, and again, I think in 2011, they had a series of papers on what system dynamic approaches mean for evaluation and monitoring. Uh, very simply, uh, again, this is, I'm rushing through it incredibly fast, but this idea when you implement interventions in systems, too much of our methodologies, the way we are trained in evaluation is we treat it like a clean system. The system does not strike back. Uh, one of the important concepts that come out of this is policy resistance, where the result is policy resistance. The tendency for the interventions to be defeated by the system's response to the intervention itself. So a couple of quick, uh, a lot of this literature focuses on unintended outcomes. This is important because far too often we are carried away as, with this notion that only good will come out of our intervention. That's again not thinking through so the realities of systems. Uh, perhaps a better slide, and again a slide that I feel uh, in most evaluation practice, we really treat the intervention itself as a fairly closed system. Uh, here's a guy sitting probably in a cubicle, decides to do something about it, uh, feeling, feeling a little closed up, etc. Turns out it's not a good idea. Yeah? Uh, uh, so the point being, the system itself can change uh, the features of, of success of an intervention. Uh, a third and very uh, really growing approach in, in, uh, in evaluation are the realist approaches that come out of Ray Posson's work in, in the UK. I work with him a little bit. Uh, again, I'm, doing, I'm really giving you a very superficial view, but Ray's big arguments, interventions are about theories. So if you go back to Haverhart Paisley, there was a theory that said, if you focus on poor areas, you're going to get poor people, then you do screening. The whole series of if-then statements. And Ray says, interventions are full of such assumptions. And the function of evaluation is to interrogate these assumptions. This I find actually quite useful in my practice. Two, a lot of health policy interventions really are not simple drugs. You're actually, people matter. That has huge consequences for the, how you actually evaluate. Third, and this is a feature of complex interventions, it's really a simple problem of going from A to Z, where A is the, your initiative and Z is your outcome. There's a whole chains of different steps and the intervention can fail at any time. Uh, this idea of learning, interventions are open systems and they should change as people learn, has ramifications for, for how you think about evaluation. Uh, his more recent work, coming out of realist evaluation, focused on realist synthesis. I'll give you one quick, two quick slides. This is a traditional view of synthesis, where you have, let's take heart disease programs in the community, where you look at the same heart, similar types of heart disease programs implemented across different communities, you go through, you look at a whole range of different evaluations. You go through some process of synthesizing. So what, so what have you learned? What's the effect size, et cetera, et cetera. What Ray argues, what Boston argues, is actually no. We should actually be synthesizing at different parts of this intervention. There are a series of if-then statements. Instead of looking at the entire intervention, let's look inside the black box of the intervention. Let's look at what we can learn about reach from a range of different interventions, not just heart disease interventions. What can we learn about screening? What can we learn about health coaching? Okay, so uh, what I want you to sort of think about is this is not sort of academicians sort of having too much time in their hands. Uh, this is really about thinking more deeply about evidence itself. Okay, so as an example, I love working when I work with communities. I like asking them what kinds of evidence do they actually find useful in implementation. 
I find a discrepancy between what they say and what academics say about what's useful evidence. So just to step back at the two minutes and 59 seconds I have is simply say, uh, I want to ask the following questions. Why do we evaluate? A lot, one view is we, we, we have to answer questions of accountability, assess the merit and worth of programs. And that's where we get into these debates. But should we do an RCT? Should we do observational studies? Et cetera, et cetera. Very often, especially for complex interventions. By the way, the surprise for me when I got into evaluation was I would go into go go into different pro go go meet program folks. The surprise surprise was people didn't have a clear idea how the program was going to work. And I once was a part of a forty million dollar evaluation where five years into the evaluation we found, of course, no results, no 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 favorable impacts. You could have told that on day one because people didn't know how on earth was that that was actually going to influence outcomes. Uh, so program and organizational improvement becomes an important purpose of evaluation. Oversight and compliance. I want, to sort of, I want you to focus on the fourth one. <clears throat> if it's true, very often we implement programs without great clarity on how are they going to impact outcomes in specific contexts. This provides an important opportunity for evaluation itself to be a knowledge development tool, to learn a little bit more about the basic mechanisms by which programs can work. Again, we're badly out of time, but once you sort of start thinking in much more complex terms, we have multiple components. You have multiple opportunities. I'm just calling this explication, where you basically have to ask, I've worked on many interventions where people sort of say, we actually don't know what the active ingredient of change itself is. If interventions change over time and there are multiple such interventions, again, the question on what are the different dynamic configurations, what's the relationship between these different components becomes an important part. Very critical. In my own practice, I like asking which components are stable, which components change over time. This becomes important because that has, answering that question impacts the kinds of designs you use. I'll leave you with this, I think, one or two more slides. Uh, remember, very often for complex interventions, you're not just looking at one intervention, you're looking at networks of different interventions. My own view is as a field, we're still grappling with what this actually means in terms of methodology. Okay, there, are, there are some interesting solutions, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, but I still feel the field itself needs to be developed. Non-uniformity poses a pretty massive challenge. What does that mean for you? Where if the program is doing its job, different people get different kinds of interventions. What does that mean for design? The third part, actually, I've done a fair bit of writing on. The surprise for me with a lot of these interventions was often we'd go into, go into the evaluation and the government would say, you have two years for the evaluation to say whether the program works or not. When you go to the field, people would say, no, it's going to take about five years for this outcome on community health to be impacted. I think as a field, we've been abysmal about raising questions on dynamics and timelines of impact. Finally, some of these interventions are not just done out of a textbook. Co-construction with stakeholders are involved in the story. My time is up. Let me respect that.